criminals. There must be a no-nonsense approach. The people all over the country appreciate and support the work that is done by the police in KZN. The crime of extortion, whereby criminal networks demand payoffs from businesses in exchange for, in some cases, protection from these mafias themselves, or on some or other perceived grounds that infringe upon these businesses' right to exist and trade freely, has cost the South African economy about 68 billion rand thus far. As if private sector businesses don't have enough to cope with, with extremely poor service delivery in South Africa in general, and a government that far too often used to scapegoat the private sector for everything that went wrong, extortion has become one of the worst millstones around the neck of businesses in our modern history. The quarterly crime statistics released last week revealed that extortion has more than doubled from the same quarter in the previous year, with Gauteng and KwaZulu-Natal leading in the numbers of cases reported in the country, and experts say extortion syndicates are not restricted to only construction, as so many of us know, but vary also and include, amongst others, housing, the taxi industry, the hospitality, hospitality industries, and we've heard of many other examples here today. Crimes of extortion often are coupled with the threat of violence or real violence against business owners, their workers, and of more often than not, their families. And I think the minister described it very aptly by calling them armies of murderous parasites. And minister, that's exactly what they are. It is no wonder then that the crime of extortion is underreported because much like in the cases of GBV, many victims are afraid of that the repercussions for reporting these crimes will lead to further violence. This means that the cost of this growing crime trend is probably much more than the estimated 6 billion rand that it has cost the South African economy thus far. These criminal syndicates are also not region-specific, but have started spreading from urban areas to smaller rural towns and communities across the country, disrupting development and undermining economic stability. As was mentioned numerous times, reporting of these crimes are very low. It is therefore of the utmost importance, Minister, that the victims of these crimes are truly supported and protected so that they are enabled to report these crimes before they become entrenched. Achbare voorzitter, die vijf plus waarskel etelike jare dat hierdie misdade in die kiem gesmoor moet word. As daar op ons waarskevings afgeslaan is, so ons nie nou hier gewees het met die probleem wat elke dag al ewig groter word nie. Nie te min, ons is nou hier en is die plus van die regering van Nationale Eenheid om die gemors van die verlede skoon te maak, so dat ekonomiese vooruitgang, werkskeping en die welstand van die Suid-Afrikaanse gemeenskap verseker kan word. Daarom verwelkom die VF plus die planne van die minister van politie wat hier aan ons vandag voorgelee is. We would have liked to see more details, Remember, minister. Your time is now expired. That's a pity. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. The next speaker is the Honourable James. Thank you so much, Chairperson. The issue of extortion syndicates in our country has spiraled dangerously out of control, becoming a crisis that strikes at the core of our economy and society. This isn't just about crime. This is about government's inability to serve and protect our communities and our businesses. Extortion rackets have spread like cancer, threatening our economy, destroying businesses, business confidence, and terrorizing our communities. No sector is immune from this notorious construction mafias to now even local businesses that are under siege. Look no further than in the Eastern Cape where businesses are being driven out of business. It is not an isolated issue, it's systemic cutting across all sectors, and no community or business is safe under this government's watch. Minister, you have inherited a crisis, no doubt created by the incompetence of your predecessor. For too long, government's lack of a coherent, zero-tolerance approach has allowed these criminal networks to embed themselves deeper into our communities. We are a nation of laws, yet extortionists, operate with near total impunity. The fact speaks for themselves. It's either police are in their pockets, they don't know how, or they are compromised. 
we cannot ignore the glaring possibility that these syndicates are politically connected, as some reports indicate. The most severely impacted are always our most vulnerable, like Nidahani. Their dignity is systemically stripped away by an indifferent government that only takes action when it's too much, when it's uncontrollable. This isn't just a fight against crime. It's a fight to restore dignity of our communities and to protect the most vulnerable amongst us. We must hold those in power accountable. We need a police force that will act decisively without fear or favor and dismantle these syndicates. It is unacceptable for fear and corruption to rule the streets while those elected to serve us look the other way or jump to action when it's too late. Our communities deserve better. And it is our duty to demand better that the law serves the people, not the few, and certainly not those who profit from this racket and chaos. I thank you. Thank you, Honourable Member. The next speaker is the Honourable Thring. Honourable House Chairperson, the ACDP welcomes the news from the Minister that the South African Police Service is taking major steps to combat extortion and protection rackets in the nation. These practices are perpetrated across the country. Organized crime syndicates operate with strong connections within local communities, many of whom live in fear. Extortionists are often aided by corrupt police or government officials who protect these criminals, obstruct investigations, or even participate in the crimes themselves, as seen by the arrest of Captain Wilfred Kikwa, who appeared in the Blue Downs Magistrate Court on extortion charges. Syndicate methods involve violence and assassinations, holding up major infrastructure and housing projects. Their tentacles reach from the top construction companies and businessmen and women to electrical engineers, local fiber installers, bus companies, even a school, a deaf school for children in the Eastern Cape. Honorable House Chairperson, evidence is key in prosecution. Yet if victims report the crime to the authorities, many live in fear. This has been exacerbated by the ineffectiveness of police in providing protection or pursuing justice. Swift prosecution is essential before communities resort to vigilante justice. Additionally, as one constituent comment, commented, our whole criminal justice and legal system is unsuited to what is happening, referring to the extortion, and arguably is not fit for purpose. The ACDP notes that SEPs and other law enforcement agencies have lacked the resources, the training, and manpower necessary to combat effectively combat organized crime and extortion. This includes inadequate technology and forensic capabilities, and is also evidenced by the fact that over the last five years, 722 extortionists were arrested, but only 52 found guilty and sentenced, which equates to a dismal and shameful 7% conviction rate. The ACDP minister last week called on you to improve cooperation with all crime-fighting agencies in order to increase conviction rates. Honorable House Chairperson, the ACDP laments the cold-blooded murder of a 64-year-old granny shot in her head by extortionists in Cryfontein because she was unable to pay their fees. May our Gorgo's death never be in vain and never go unpunished. This extortion ring must be smashed and no stone left unturned in bringing these murderous extortionists to book. I thank you. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Kwankwa. Honorable Kwangwa, Honorable Kana,
Nsama shituli na kensa Kensa kunyi kwa nkari Kensa kunyi kwa nkari Olobje The police must prevail They have to prevail Because we are not safe They have to prevail because businesses are not safe The police have to prevail because pensioners are not safe Communities are not safe The extortion gangs and rackets are terrorizing all of us Doctors' running practices are being targeted. Informal traders are a target. Spaza shop and small business, small businesses are a target, including construction sites that have become battleground. This has become a pandemic. It is spreading like wildfire or even COVID-19. COVID it's no longer just an, an urban or city pandemic. It has spread to deep rural areas of our country. These gangs target vulnerable people who are trying to make a living under already difficult conditions. That today you are making this statement is a proof that extortion rings pose a significant threat to our communities. So what are the conditions that give rise to this pandemic? We know one is unemployment and secondly is impunity. Because even when arrested, these criminals will be released in a few days or weeks. People feel that the police are no longer protecting them, forcing them to pay protection fees. The trust levels between the police and communities have broken down, as many see the police working to protect the criminals rather than protecting the victims. We must, we must also be honest with ourselves. The spread of this of the extortion pandemic points to a failure of crime intelligence, which I know, Minister, you have committed to sort out. We know what happened to crime intelligence. It became politicized back in the days. But we want to say as Rising Zanzi that visible policing and brute force alone will not deal with this pandemic. It needs proper intelligence. It needs the working together of the hawks, uh, the NPA, so that we don't just arrest, but those that are arrested are prosecuted and sent to jail. And we believe that acting on intelligence and building watertight cases must be what the police focus on all of them. Thank you, Honorable Member. Honorable Maiman. Uh, Honorable Minister, Deputy President, uh, fellow Hello. South Africans. Sorry. Well, we did Speaker, call you before. We did call you earlier, and you did I not apologize. respond. So I now on the issues. platform. No, can you no, please no, listen understand. to me? Sorry, I apologize. Yes. Yes. Now on the platform is Honorable Maiman. Uh, what you would note is that, Honorable Minister, recently I was in Kabecha, in a community in Woma. And when I arrived in Woma, it struck me when I got there, it's the fact that this is a community where the church, where young people walked in there and robbed people, was there. And it struck me on a few thoughts. The first was that citizens recognize this very difficult issue, which is that when they call the police, sometimes the police don't show up. And when the police do show up, sometimes they are demanding bribes themselves. The worst feeling that a citizen can have in this country isn't just a feeling of a fear of being robbed or facing extortion. It's the fear that comes with the fact that even when the police come, there's no help. The genuine feeling of helplessness. And this is what this debate must be about today. Because in truth, there are 500 murders a week. The reality is that we've grown at 1% for the last 10 years. And in truth, even though we speak about an increase in crimes against women, there seems to be no appropriation that has been allocated for that fight. So, Honorable Minister, I'm here to say to you, we cannot afford another talk. What we've got to be doing here today is making a declaration of war on crime. And here are my suggestions in a few ways, and I would want to work with you in achieving this. We need a new capacitation of police. The truth is we're living with 8,000 vacancies and only 22,000 detectives in the country. That is far from enough. We will never win. 
The second is, once we've done that, we have to fix our police station so that people can feel a place of hope and help when they go there. Thirdly, Minister, I want to suggest very strongly is that we need a new consensus on values. Because honestly, you cannot put a policeman in every church. There's something inherently wrong, and that's why all of us as citizens must work together to fight crime in our communities and say to ourselves, how do we partner with the police to fight crime? More seriously, I want to urge that we need a different prioritization. Before 2010, Minister, what remained patently clear was that when we prioritized murder, which is the general feeling people fear, is that we are able to focus police resources, capacitate budget, and fight crime. And so what I'm, what I'm suggesting is that let's increase the budget, let's get better police, police, and let's ensure more vitally that once we've done that, we give them the best vehicles to fight. Let's eradicate ethical or, or policemen who lack ethics and leaders who lack ethics. Because if you create the impression that if you do the crime in this country, you'll get away with it, trust me, extortionists believe the same. So in my closing, Minister, if we work with the Department of Justice, we have to improve conviction rates. Otherwise, our prison doors are revolving doors. Time for talk is over. It's time for us to act now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ma Dibule Leslalo. Minister, extortionists are brazen criminals who have got no regard for law-abiding citizens. They target everyone, including the most poor and vulnerable in our society. The national government needs to follow the lead of the KZN police in dealing decisively with criminals. The KZN police has shown the country the type of attitude we need to have towards criminals. There must be a no-nonsense approach. The people all over the country appreciate and support the work that is done by the police in KZN. The foreign-funded NGOs and the experts that have made themselves the mouthpiece of criminals at the expense of South Africans must please volunteer their skills and be in the front line of police operations. There were Amaparete minister who used to patrol in high crime areas and their deployment assisted in, re in reducing crime. Amaparete and other special task forces must be deployed in areas where extortion crimes arrive. Minister, you must engage the Justice Department to ensure the NPA prioritizes the prosecution of criminals arrested for extortion crimes. The security cluster must work together to ensure we deal, we deal decisively with criminality at all levels. Our people are discouraged and soon will take the law into their own hands when they see that the government seemingly protects criminals over them. Minister, your department needs to strengthen its internal integrity mechanisms and root out corrupt police officers from all levels. Corrupt police officers are the reasons why citizens lose faith in law enforcement and end up taking the law into their own hands. There are other crimes that warrant priority by the department. Other crimes such as drug trade, false prosecution, the production of fake products and fake essay document they also need to be dealt with with agents, agency as well. The police raids minister in South Beach, Etequini, expose the rot of crime in South Africa. Similar raids needs to be done in Sunnyside, Hillbro, Bedford View, Central Ekebeha, and all other CBDs where all these crimes arrive. All police officers must be encouraged to use maximum force whenever their lives are under threat from extortionists and criminals. The state can't keep on burying police officers who lose their lives whilst protecting their citizens from criminals. The state must protect the policemen who protect the people. Thank you. Welcome to RT Celeb Times. That's it for now, guys, and thank you so much for watching this video. And please tell us what you think about this on the comment section below. And please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more.